So you want to up your photography game specifically on and around bikes. Well, that kind of throws up this very unique set of challenges that are particular to cycling because you are outside in motion in the elements and there's all kinds of things that are working against you being able to sort of take photography gear with you. So I wanted to make a video to help out those people who are committed to emptying their bank account even faster by adding a second grotesquely expensive hobby to cycling. But first, let's talk about why I'm covering this topic at all. I haven't really talked about this on my channel before, but I'm much more of a photographer than I am a YouTuber. I shoot semi-professionally on the side of my regular job and all of my clients are in the cycling industry. From brands to teams to cycling clubs, I also shoot for fun and just to take nicer photos for publishing on La Vella Cheetah articles. There's very few days where I don't pick up a camera. and I'm almost always riding with my camera on me, so it's been a real crash course in what really matters with cycling and photography. But that's enough about me. Let's go back to the core question. What is the ideal camera setup for cycling? Well, this video is gonna run through the most important factors that you need to consider, and then I'm gonna run through all the different types of camera that could be suitable for you to take out with you on the bike. The first and most important factor in taking great bike photos is TMWHTC, or the meaty water balloon holding the camera, which is an obnoxious way of saying you. You are the most important part. It's a well-known cliche in photography circles that gear doesn't matter, and that is partly true. What you should take away from that is that the most significant, meaningful, and cheapest upgrade you can make is to your skill. The more you practice, the more you learn the art of photography, the better photos you will take no matter what equipment you have. Photography is all about telling stories and stories will always transcend the sort of technical aspects of the camera that you're using. On the flip side, gear can definitely be a barrier to be able to capture that story. Some things just won't work, particularly on a bike and with all of the limitations and the movement of being a cyclist. And that's exactly why I wanted to make this video. Cycling has a very unique set of problems you need to overcome. So let's move on to number two. The second factor is TTIFUEP, or time to in-focus usably exposed photos. Just how quickly can it take the sort of photo that you would actually want to use? The word usable is the most crucial one in that sentence because I'm not talking about perfection. The photos don't have to be absolutely technically perfect, but they need to be in focus. There need to be enough light to tell you the story and for the subject to come through. Factor number three is at handiness. And this is a supplementary factor to TTIFUEP. How long does it take you to whip out your photo device and snap a shot? The best camera in the world is meaningless for cycling when it's inaccessible and you don't have a lot of time to capture the moment. I've spent multiple rides with a nice camera just buried in a bag and it is just inaccessible enough for me to never really pull it out and use it. The harder it is to get the device, the less likely you are to use it. Factor number four is form factor. The easier it is to carry, the more likely you are to take it out on the bike. Space is especially critical for bikepacking, so you need to choose a media device wisely. Now this isn't just overall size necessarily, but also the shape. This little Sony a6300 is a fairly compact camera, but with this lens, it's kind of big in every direction, which means it's really not ideal for taking with you on the bike. My little Fuji is actually a little bit bigger, but with the right lens on it, it is sort of slim and narrow enough for me to take it with me. So consider the form factor as well as the overall size. Factor number five is ruggedness. Will it actually survive the trip and all of the potential conditions that will be thrown at it? Unfortunately, this camera did not survive the experience of being used when cycling. It's really important that you only take a camera with you that you can afford to replace. 
That transitions nicely into fact number six, which is cost. Cycling is already expensive. Adding photography gear can really stress the old bank account. I'll repeat again, only ride with what you can afford to replace. The final factor may surprise you because it is image quality. Yes, I'm putting this dead last and you'll see why by the end of the video. Bigger and better specs add bloat, complication, size, cost, and all of the things we're trying to balance out or avoid entirely. It's really important to keep in mind that you don't need amazing gear because most people are gonna view your content on a phone anyway. The smaller the screen, the more forgiving it'll be to your photos. Things like Instagram are very forgiving. YouTube is mostly viewed in 1080p anyway. Those platforms will make the flaws much less visible. So you don't need to worry about the outright headroom of your capturing device. Worry about how people are going to look at it. So we've set the scene and the big reveal is that the ultimate cycling camera is your phone. Phones are easy to use. They can automatically focus and expose super fast. They're always with you, pretty much always handy, have a super slim form factor. And finally, the results can be pretty amazing. What makes phones so powerful is the combination of hardware and software absolves you of the responsibility of having to focus and expose. It's all taken care of for you, so you don't need to worry about ISO, shutter speed, and all that sort of stuff that you do with a bigger, more manual camera. And modern phones don't even have to be particularly expensive to have very good cameras and video specs in them. I have been a fairly loyal Pixel user for the last few years, and I have always been very impressed with the photos that they can take. This Pixel 5 has really stepped the game up with a video quality perspective, and I've been really happy with the results I've been able to get from it. Phones can also be very capable little vlogging cameras as well, if that's your sort of thing, which it's never really been my kind of thing, but yeah, they'll do a good job if you get a decent sort of wide angle on your selfie camera, and maybe if there's a little bit of stabilization in there to get smooth footage, which, you know, would help if I wasn't doing this on a gravel trail. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. There are a couple of downsides to phones. The files are very software driven, so they don't always stand up well to being processed or edited if you're going down that path. There's also the fact that phone photos tend to look like phone photos. So if you really are going for a unique or an identifiable style, phones maybe won't be the best way to go about it, but that's not gonna be everyone. For the vast majority of people, these are the best devices by a country mile. The second category is action cameras. These talented little bricks have become popular for good reason. They're compact, reasonably priced, rugged as hell, and with amazing video capabilities in general. The stabilization on them can be truly magical, but should you get one? There's a lot going for these talented little bricks that are action cameras, especially if video is your ultimate target more so than photos. There's some incredible tech that is crammed into modern GoPros and I really love the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 as well. And that's probably the one that I would buy personally if I was looking to upgrade. I love the form factor and the inbuilt gimbal would mean really beautifully smooth photos and videos. This is what I've been using for the last few years. It's a Sony FDR-X3000. I actually don't recommend it. The results you can get from it are quite good and the stabilization from when it came out was exceptionally good, but I think there's just far better alternatives to it nowadays. You would have seen footage from this before if you've been watching this channel. It's all of my B-roll chesty footage is done with this. I used that little action camera when I first rode the Mawson Trail in 2017. And again, it's all about capturing the moments and telling the stories. They may not be the best photos and footage overall, but I will love it for how it captured the memories. Now the drawbacks to action cameras are probably the photos. I don't particularly like the sort of fisheye look. Action cameras do have a way of sort of distorting your subject, stretching faces, stretching bodies, and stretching landscapes. But that's not a huge deal, and some people do like action camera photos. Can't argue with the video specs though, so action cameras are a good option. The compact camera segment has a lot of potential for cyclists with small size, usually a well-rounded feature set of photo and video, and often a zoom lens to get you some range. It's stacked with options too, from cheap to hyper expensive, so you can pick something to suit your budget. 
The compact fixed lens market is stacked with options and you just need to pick one that falls within your price point. This is a Sony RX100 Mark III and I was very happy with it for the years that I was using it until I destroyed it. There's also some other really nice options from Panasonic and Canon, but if money were no object, I would get the Fujifilm X100V because it's just a thing of beauty and the results that I've seen come out of them are spectacular. And I'm a Fuji fan. I'm actually filming this on a Fuji X-T4. The drawbacks of this market segment can be ruggedness unless you go for a sort of tough camera, which I would say do fall into this segment as well. The form factor is also starting to get bigger and some of them can be quite expensive. But for a lot of people, this will be a viable option. And the last category is interchangeable lens cameras, the big dogs of the camera world. The best potential quality photos, but also the biggest, most expensive, least convenient, hardest to use, and most genuinely unnecessary. Which is exactly why I love riding with an interchangeable lens camera. I totally went bikepacking for three days with this camera and lens, it's the Fuji X-T1, strapped onto my back and I got away with it because the weather was pretty good. I just love the files that come out of interchangeable lens cameras. It is absolutely a pain in the butt to carry this thing around bikepacking, but I wanted the result, so I was willing to put up with it. I don't recommend cameras within this section for the vast majority of people because they're just unnecessary, but if you are going to go down this path, then I reckon crop sensor cameras are where the best value to sort of results will come in. Micro Four Thirds options from Olympus, APS-C options from Fuji and Sony. Personal I'd love a Fuji X-E4 because I already have the lenses that'll go with it, but that's my personal taste. There's quite a lot out there that have that sort of interchangeable lens and smaller crop sensor that can suit your budget. Full frame and big chunky DSLRs, you do occasionally see people riding with them, but I think that's just really completely unnecessary. But if that's all you got and you want the results from it, then yeah, whatever makes you happy. To wrap it all up then, don't feel like you need amazing gear when you're out taking photos and videos on the bike. Ultimately, the challenges that cycling presents means that you really can get away with scaling your gear back anyway. Keep it simple and devote yourself to practicing photography. And I personally have taken a huge amount of joy from getting better at it over time. Hopefully those who are researching this particular topic have found some inspiration and some points from this that will set them on the right path. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hang around and watch all kinds of other content I've got on the channel. Ride safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time.